Hello and welcome back to Anton Math. Now we just finished talking about primes and divisors, kind of a review video from the very beginning of the semester. Um, but now I'm going to go into a related topic, and that topic is GCD and the Euclidean algorithm. So first GCD, or greatest common divisor. We say if a and b are positive integers, then the GCD of a and b equals d, where d divides a, d divides b, and if we have some other k that divides both a and b, then that k is less than or equal to d. So what this part says here is that d is the largest number that divides both a and d, a and b, right? If something else divides a and b, it means it is the GCD or it's less than the GCD. Now I could as well just write greatest common factor, and sometimes people write greatest common factor, because of course the greatest common divisor is going to be positive, and if it's positive then it's also the greatest common factor. So those would be the same thing. Now if GCD of a and b equals 1, we call a and b co-prime or relatively prime. Uh, for example, uh, the GCD, we don't need primes here, uh, the GCD of 6 and, uh, I don't know, 25 equals 1. Right? These have no factors in common at all. 6 is 2 times 3, 25 is 5 squared, so the GCD is just 1, which means that we would call 6 and 25 co-prime or relatively prime to each other. Now let's see a little example of calculating the GCD. Now we can calculate the GCD using what we learned in the last video with the prime factorization. The way that we calculated GCD with prime factorization, for example if we have 52 and 39, First, I'm going to break both 52 and 39 into their prime factors. So 52 is 2 times 26, which is just 2 squared times 13. Both 2 and 13 are primes, so we're done. 39 is equal to 3 times 13. Both 3 and 13 are prime, so we're done. Now these two together imply that the GCD of 52 and 39 is going to be 13. And if they had more common factors, it would it would just be the intersection. It's the product of the intersection of the, all the, the common factors, right? If you think about it, anything that divides both of these numbers is going to have to be composed of factors that are already present in these numbers because 2 and 13 are prime. So nothing divides 2 and 13 other than 2 and 13. So the GCD, including 52, can only have factors of 2s and 13s. The GCD of anything including 39 can only have factors of 3s and 13s. And for as many as are common, the GCD can include those, so then it must include those to be the greatest such factor. Okay. Now, prime factorization works well for small numbers, uh, but when we get to larger numbers and things like that, it's useful to use what we call the Euclidean algorithm in order to compute the GCD. Now the Euclidean algorithm is a general method for computing the GCD of any two natural numbers and it's based on elementary division. So what we're basically going to do for this Euclidean algorithm is we're going to repeatedly divide in the following way until a remainder of 0 is obtained. So if we want GCD here of a and b, and here I'm going to have, we're going to assume that a is greater than b, right? If a equals b, then the GCD is just a or b, whichever you want to call it. Um, but without loss of generality, we're going to assume that a is greater than b, and whichever number is greater, we'll just that will play the role of a in this algorithm. Now what we're going to do is first we're going to take a and divide it by b. Now whenever we divide two numbers, we have a quotient, which we're not too concerned with at this point, and we're going to have a remainder. Now the requirements for my quotient is that it's greater than or equal to zero. Of course we could have a quotient equal to zero. I'll go ahead and fix that. But for my remainder, I need my remainder to be greater than or equal to 0 and less than b for this first step. Now after I do this first step and I get a, a remainder, let's assume it's not 0, we're just going to continue doing this next process until a remainder of 0 is obtained. I'm going to take this b here and move it over here. Again, not my quotient, but the b I originally had. I'm going to take my remainder 1, this is now playing the role of my b, right? b takes the role of a, remainder 1 takes the role of b, and doing this division again I'm going to find a new remainder. That remainder I need to be uh, greater than or equal to 0 or less than my first remainder. And we repeat this, now I'm going to divide remainder 1 by remainder 2, and so on, until we reach 0. Now once we reach 0, our last non-zero remainder, in this case r n plus 1, is going to be our GCD. 
Now that's pretty cool, right? This works really well for extremely large numbers because factoring really large numbers can be a, a real pain, right? So let's see why this is. Well, first of all, if my GCD is D, I know that D divides A and D divides B. Now if D divides A and D divides B, that implies that D divides the difference. D is going to divide A minus BQ1, which of course is just equal to R1. All I'm doing in this first equation here is I'm going to subtract B minus Q1 to the other side, like this, and I'm left with R1 on the right. Now, why is this? If D divides A and D divides B, that means I can factor out a D from A, I can factor out a D from B, I could bring that D from both A and B out to the front here, and that of course is what we mean by divides, isn't it? I can have a factor of D here. Now this just equals R1, so in particular this means that D divides R1. So we continue on with this argument. If D divides B and D divides R1, then of course D divides R2. If D divides R1 and D divides R2, then of course D divides R3. So in general, D divides RK for any of my remainders. Now, once we get a remainder of zero, we're going to kind of unwrap this in the other direction. Here, I have that Rn plus one divides Rn, doesn't it? From my last equation, because I have a zero here as a remainder, I have Rn equals Rn plus one, times my quotient, and that means, by definition, that Rn plus 1 divides Rn. Now, if Rn plus 1 divides Rn, well, looking at the equation before that, Rn plus 1 divides itself, Rn plus 1 divides Rn, so this implies that Rn plus 1 divides Rn minus 1 from this equation here. Right? It divides everything on the right side, so it must divide the left side as well. And then we continue up doing the exact same argument uh, in the previous equation before this. I'm going to have Rn plus 1 divides Rn, Rn minus 1 on the right-hand side. So on the left-hand side, it'll divide Rn minus 2. And in general, er, and continuing all the way to the top, we're going to be able to get all the way up to Rn plus 1 divides A and Rn plus 1 divides B. Now, if Rn plus 1 divides A and it divides B, that means that it's a common divisor. It might not be the greatest common divisor, we'll see in a second if it is, but in general this means that Rn plus 1 divides D. Now taking these two facts together, if I have that D divides Rn plus 1, and I have that Rn plus 1 divides D, the only way that this can happen is if Rn plus 1 equals D. So that's our little outline for the proof. Uh, it's not very uh, <laughs> <clears throat> elaborate, but uh, simple proof really. I, I really just want to share the idea. This is why we can do division in this way to get the GCD. Now let's see why this is useful. Let's look at a couple of examples. Let's say we want to find the uh, GCD of 862 and 291 using the Euclidean algorithm. Now of course I could just use prime factorization for both of these numbers, but 862 is pretty big it's going to take me a while to do prime factorization. So let's see if this is easier uh, doing it another way. Oh, actually, I think I've miswritten this. I want this to be 864 and 291. It works out uh, nicely. So let's find the GCD of 864 and 291. Now, 864 is playing the role of my A. 291 is playing the role of my B. And 864 is going to end up equaling 2 times 291 plus 282. So it was almost 3 times 291, but not quite, right? Now 291 equals just 1 times 282. These numbers I'm putting in parentheses, these are my quotients. Remember, the quotients don't play roles in the future. Um, it's the 282 I'm going to divide, by net, or divide out of next, etc. Now 291 equals 282 plus 9, so I have a remainder of 9. 282 is going to equal 31 times 9 plus 3 and 9 of course equals 3 times 3 plus 0. So now I have a 0 remainder. My last non-zero remainder is my GCD by the proof we just looked at. So the GCD of 264 and 291 is 3. Now we could have done the whole prime factorization. We would have found a lot of factors that didn't matter because it turns out the only thing they have in common is a single 3. 
And in the next video, we're going to talk about a, an, an even easier way to do this process using matrices, but uh, we're not there yet. Let's do one more example. Uh, let's say I want to... Oh, this is my same example, isn't it? Um, let me fix this real quick. All right. This is, this is the problem I actually want to do. I want to find the GCD of three numbers. Now, we didn't define GCD for three numbers, but we can generalize the idea, right? A GCD of three numbers is going to be the largest factor of all three numbers. So the way I'm going to do this is first, I'm going to find the GCD of these two numbers. So looking at 378 and 336, well, 378 equals 1 times 336 plus 42. 336, um, I believe, uh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that equals 8 times 42 plus 0. So the GCD of 378 and 336 equals 42. Now, why did I do this with two numbers? Well, first of all, because the Euclidean algorithm only works with two numbers. But second of all, now, to find the GCD of 378, 336, and 490, it's going to be enough to find the GCD of 490 and 42. Right? 42 is the largest number that divides both 378 and 336. So if there's some number that divides all three of these numbers, it must also be a divisor of 42. And the greatest such divisor of these two numbers will be the greatest common divisor of these three numbers. All right, take a second to think about it if that's not clear to you right away. But continuing on, now I can do the Euclidean algorithm with these two numbers. 490 is going to equal 11 times 42. All right, that gives us a 462, so plus 28. 42 is just 1 of 28 plus 14. And 28, of course, equals 2 times 14 plus 0. So my GCD of all three numbers is going to be 14. All right, and that's the end of our GCD uh, and Euclidean algorithm, algorithm basics. Uh, in the next video, we're going to talk about linear combinations of GCDs. And I'm going to show you a really cool method using what we talked about with matrices. And this is why we talked about matrices, actually. Um, that's going to help us to calculate this GCD and its linear combination very quickly. It will be very useful in 9.2. So we'll see you in the next video.